hello. Uh, I haven't filmed in here in a while, um, but it is overcast today, so I don't have super weird blinding shafts of sunlight coming in, and it's actually like not late afternoon by the time I got around to filming, so that's great. Um, it was funny, uh, I've been putting my camera on a little tri on a tripod, my partner's photography tripod, and I couldn't find it today, and then I realized, oh, he took it to work. <laughs> That's why I can't find it. He He's using it. So, um, we are back to y'all being balanced on a step stool. It's great. I am doing the, what is it called? Uh, mid-year book freakout tag and I would like to film like a mid-year kind of stats update tag We'll see when I get around to that things are getting busy. Um, I'm going back to work next week It's just for next week and then like I don't have work again until August um, But I've got return to work dates Huzzah, but then I've just had like other things pop up and I try to upload like at least one video a week on a Monday, but um, If it doesn't happen doesn't doesn't happen and that's okay. Um, anyway, a tag video is a nice kind of like fun, um, but low preparation, <laughs> low editing needs kind of video. So we're going to do that. Okay. Uh, mid-year book freakout tag. Um, I do not know who, off the top of my head. I did not. Oops. Off. What? I fucking charged you. Stand by. Okay. Things look a little bit different because... I thought I had charged my filming phone. Apparently I didn't. So we're filming on my regular phone. So things might look a little different and hopefully my clips don't get all screwed up. Okay. Um, Mid-year book freakout tag. I uh, forgot to look up if uh, who the original creator of this tag is. Uh, I will look into that and I will leave what information I find in the description box below. Um, there are 13 questions, so let's get into it. Um, question number one, what's the best book you've read so far in 2020? Um, in true book nerd fashion, I cannot pick just one, um, but some standouts are The Space Between Worlds, uh, Cemetery Boys, you're going to see that one on here a lot. Um, Braiding Sweetgrass is probably my favorite nonfiction, but there's, again, quite a few that I really love that I've read. The best audiobook by far is Concrete Rose. Um, which is no surprise because uh, The Hate You Give was one of my favorite audiobooks from last year. There is just something about Angie Thomas's writing style that translates really well to um, uh, an audiobook. Um, it's, you know, and then the performers that get cast for the audiobooks are always just so perfect for the roles. So, great. Um, best sequel you've read so far in... I think I just said 2020. It's 2021. If I say 2020, we're filming this tag for 2021. Um, the sequel you've read so far, I haven't read too many. I actually started, I made a list of like all the series I've started but not finished and I'm trying to like work on. But of what I've read, I would say maybe like The Well of Ascension, um, the second book in the Mistborn trilogy, mostly because of the ending. It's like that one was solid and Dragon Republic was solid, but I liked, I think the ending of All of Ascension made more of an impact. Um, and then also uh, Feast of Sparks was quite a solid follow-up to A Lesson in Thorns. Um, they're not like the best books I've read all year, but I sometimes feel like I'll start reading something from a romance author and then like the subsequent books are often at least like more of the same um but this one I felt like it was more of the same in a good way but it also like built on the story well um oh technically uh a favorite follow-up I've read is the intimacy experiment but I didn't think about that one because I haven't read the first one um so for me it's not like a sequel or a follow-up um but if you've read The Roommate, um, The Intimacy Experiment is very good. Um, so, okay. Question number three. New releases you haven't read yet but want to. So many, um, but some standouts are The Witch King, which uh, I think I have checked out from my library. So I need to finish the book I'm on and then I can start that one. Um, I was totally drawn into it by... Um, uh, Perpetual Pages review of that and um, their interview with the author was also really interesting. Um, Son of the Storm is another, I 
think it's YA fantasy. It's a fantasy that, um, cover was fucking gorgeous. The premise was interesting and the reviews have been good. So I'm excited for that one. Dear Sentheron by Akweke Amezi, um, uh, just came out and, um, I, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of on like a tentative, like no buy for books in June, just so I can kind of address some of the physical books I need to read. Um, but that's definitely going to be one that I'm picking up soon. Um, and then uh, 400 Souls is a book I actually picked up in, I picked up an ebook copy in um, February when it came out and I still haven't gotten around to it. So um, that's definitely one that I want to make sure I get to this year. Um, Question number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Uh, I've got three. <laughs> um, uh, one that I've pre-ordered is Consumed on Colonialism by, wait, what's the full title? Hold on. Consumed on Colonialism, Climate Change, Consumerism, and the Need for Collective Change by Aja Barber. I follow Aja on Instagram. She talks a lot about climate change, justice, uh, racial and uh, economic justice through the lens of fashion and fast fashion. So uh, I've, I've seen some of the interviews she's given. I've see, I see the posts, a lot of the content and interviews and um, discussions that she has. And I'm very interested in seeing how all of those ideas come together into a book format. Um, so I'm super excited to support her uh, debut book. Um, and then other anticipated releases are <laughs> Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. Um, I've only read the first book, Jade City, um, and I need to reread it and then get myself a copy of Jade War. Um, but I'm very excited for that series to finish out. Um, and then uh, Casadora by Romina Garber. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, Lobizona that she came out with last year. Um, so uh, I'm excited to continue on in that world. Um, and that one, so Jade Legacy comes out in December and Casadora comes out in August. Um, and I don't, did I mention, uh, Consumed comes out in September. Question number five, what was your biggest disappointment? Uh, the Dark is Rising series, because I really enjoyed the first book. Um, but then the rest of the series just didn't have like the charming adventure spirit of the first book. Um, I'm glad I reread it and I'm glad to like refamiliarize myself as it as like an iconic uh, children's fantasy series but um, yeah the rest of the books were quite a letdown from how much I liked the first one um, and then I would get I would say like the power and um, a lady's handbook for her mysterious illness uh, these were both just like two books I picked up because they sounded interesting, but they weren't like anticipated releases. But I'm calling them big disappointments because the concept of what they each were doing was very interesting. But the end result was like there were some weird glaring omissions. There were some weird choices in like, well, one of them is like a science fiction. One of them is a memoir. But, but, but both of them both have the problem of like the premise was interesting. The writing was good. The storytelling was good. Um... But the end result was like, oh, I wish I could recommend this more, but nah, you kind of dropped the ball on some really important points. Question number six, what was your biggest surprise? Uh, that would be my reread of Johnny Hazard by Eddie de Oliveira. Um, it's buried in there. Um, so uh, this was a book that I was, was on my like amnesia reads list. A uh, book I, I had read, but I couldn't remember anything about. And initially I thought it was going to be like interesting, but not really suit me. But I was really drawn into the story. And um, I thought that I could tell that the author was doing some really intentional, interesting things with how the story was crafted. Um, so that one was really surprising, like how much I actually got really invested and enjoyed the story by the end. Um, I also have to shout out, I hope we choose love, a trans girl's notes from the end of the world by Kai Cheng Tom. This is a book I just read for, uh, the Asian readathon. Um, this was like a nonfiction sort of collection of essays with some poetry in there. I fucking loved Kai Cheng Tom's writing. Um, and she, uh, she, in some of her essays, she articulates some ideas that, like, I've been kind of, like, ruminating and coming to terms with on my own, and it was just really 
like validating in a way, but also like interesting to see someone else who is clearly a very talented um, writer and not just writer, but a uh, critical thinker, um, how, how she came to those ideas and the examples that she used for them. Um, so like that is a, a book that I would like to get um, a copy of and I would, I definitely look forward to reading more of her work. Um, okay. Question number seven, favorite new author. This could be a debut author or an author that's new to you. Uh, S.A. Chakraborty, uh, author of City of Brass. Um, I definitely really, really love that series. Um, did I not put that in like my favorites of the year? Uh, probably should be up there in favorites of the year as well. Um, Kai Cheng Tam, who I just talked about, um, and then Sierra Simone, who uh, wrote Lesson in Thorns and Feast of Sparks. Um, just because like I really like her writing style and also like she kind of like that was kind of maybe the first not the first first but um like one of the first like dark academia books I mean it's a dark romance but it's definitely got clear trendy dark academia vibes and I'm like oh I like this okay apparently dark academia is a bu buzzword for me great okay question number eight newest fictional crush I don't really get too involved too invested in a fictional crush but um uh if i had to pick someone i'd probably say uh ethan from the intimacy experiment he just sounds like somebody i would really get along with and like i really enjoy the description of uh his butt in baseball pants and um yes i would probably enjoy that very much as well um great uh question number nine newest favorite character um i gotta say maverick from concrete rose i just fucking love his character development um and um his voice in that story um and also Kara from Space Between Worlds is a fucking badass and I love her number 10 a book that made you cry Cemetery Boys um and it was very much a I know you're gonna be fine but you're not fine right now and I don't really know how you're gonna get there and I just want you to be fine um <laughs> question number 11 a book that made you happy uh, also Cemetery Boys. I just, full range of emotion on, on that one. It was quite a ride. Um, also, um, I just reread um, The Secret Garden. I read it in Spanish, so the title is El Jardín Secreto. Um, but that is uh, a childhood favorite of mine and just rereading it, especially like in the springtime as like everything's starting to bloom and everything. I'm just like, oh, this just feels really good. <laughs> and cozy. It's a very cozy, perfect springtime book. Um, great. Um, question number 12. The most beautiful book you've bought this far or received? I've got three contenders because, of course, cannot pick just one. Um, I'd say uh, this hardcover of Braiding Sweet Sweetgrass. It's got beautiful uh, woodcut illustration. The letters are embossed. It's got um, a bookmark ribbon. This is the Milkweed edition. It might, might be like the Milkweed anniversary edition, um, but it doesn't have a dust, dust jacket. All this image is just on the actual hardcover. Um, and then an unread one is Firekeeper's Daughter. I've already complained about these stickers that are printed on here. Why? But, um, I'm really glad this got good reviews because, like, I could not stop thinking about this book because of this cover. Great. Um, and then, this is kind of a carryover from last year, but I didn't acquire a physical copy until this year, um, and that's Lobizona. Um, I reference that uh, the follow-up to this Casadora is coming out later this year, but... Uh... Oh, there's a wolf on the back. Um... Fuck yeah. This illustration cover is... The, the illustration for this cover is fucking stunning. Um, oh. And then, you know, you've got the inside. Not quite a map, but you've got, like, the lunar landscape. Um, and then some other artwork in here. Uh, and then even inside the book jacket. Which is stunning all around. Uh, okay. Okay. Last question. Question number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, all of them, of course, but some like priority ones. Um, I've on my physical TBR, I have uh, selected poems by Pablo Neruda 
and um, American Chica is a memoir. And those two books, I think, are the ones that have been on my physical TBR shelf the longest. And I feel like if I don't read them by the end of this year, I need to pass them on. Um, definitely need to read The Kingdom of Copper because I have that. And then um, The Empire of Gold when the paperback comes out. I need to reread Jade, War Jade City and then read Jade War and then... Uh, probably get on the hold at my library for Jade Legacy because um, I have I have it in paperback and I want them I want I, I would like to keep my editions consistent if I can um, and then two other books that um, I'm really interested in um, uh, Little Black Bird uh, this is a book that my library doesn't have I've requested it I don't think they got a copy of it so I need to get a copy of it uh, it just sounds really interesting and underhyped. Um, and this is also um, a book that I have kind of like a short list of books that I want to read to see which one I would like to give my niece for Christmas. Um, because uh, I gave her a copy of Lobisona um, last year and she really enjoyed that story. So I would like to find more um, YA fantasy stuff for her. And that's one of the ones that sounds really interesting and also because my library doesn't have it I want to get to it um and then um I also have made it a point I also have a short list of uh translated fiction I want to read more trans fiction that has been translated into English from other languages um and right now like at the top of my list um I'm on hold for it at my library uh but this one is The Root of Ice and Salt um this is translated from Spanish the author is from Spain um and I think this deals with the ship that is carrying Dracula's coffin as he journeys from mainland Europe to England. I think that's what it's about. It's something like that. Um, I also kind of have a project of like, I have a bunch of vampire fiction that I want to read. Um, so um, yeah, so like there, I, I could make such a list of all the books I want to read this year, but I feel like off kind of off the top of my head, these are ones where I'm like, I don't necessarily need to read them right now, but before the end of the year. Yeah. Um, cool. Great. This will be a nice <laughs> short little video sort of. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day. I encourage you to go out into the world and be curious. Uh, I will have my other social media link places listed in the description box if you want to connect with me elsewhere. Uh, card on my regular phone filled up as I was at my last sentence. <laughs> so we hopefully we can film it just on this one. It'll be a mess. Great. Anyway, I'll catch you on my next video. Bye!